Um, I think one of the first games I'm going to show off here is Horizon Survival. Uh, this was one um, that was made by two people who met Encore, uh, and they had never they have never met before in the real world. They had never worked together before. Um, and one of them, I think, is actually a data analyst at a large game company. But you know, as a data analyst, you probably never get the opportunity to make your own creative. Uh, product and you know uh, uh, and lead a, a creative product. So this is a really cool one uh, that they got the team together. The idea is it is um, it base defense. Uh, we are on an alien planet here and we are defending from rampaging aliens. Um, and this one really surprised us with just the amount of creativity and custom animations that the creators made for these bugs um, and and the weapons and everything. Like everything was awesome about this one. Go grab a flamethrower. Is it is it going. easy for you said this was made by two people that met on core? Is it is that collaboration process easy uh, in the game just based on the, the tools uh, yes. programs available? Yes, absolutely. We definitely wanted to make that easy um, for creative to do. Um, so there's a couple ways that creators can collaborate in core. Um, the most common one is to just if they're familiar with Git and using uh, GitHub. You can you can just put your core project on GitHub and it just works seamlessly. Uh, and uh, the other ways that we've had people work together is uh, actually, <laughs> you know, believe it or not, emailing each other zip files of different objects. Uh, you can export a template. Um, so if I make a template that's like this turret, for instance, I can export that as just a little tiny you know text file and email it to somebody and they can drag and drop it onto core. Yes. Right, because you're not sending the model, you're sending the data inside the game that accesses the model, correct? Exactly, exactly. Yep, you got it. Uh, so this is, yeah, this is definitely one where, you know, the, they, they clearly sort of, uh, you know, put their love and, and passion and heart into this one. It's fully featured. It's got events that happen every once in a while, like a dropship will come take you to another part of the planet. Um, I've actually had like like Frederick. I haven't played in a few days, and these these aliens that are running around like look like the zombies are kind of new. I haven't seen those yet. That's that's something that is sorry because it's so abused to us. But I want to make sure I really comment that as a player, it's so exciting that not only you have always new games, whether they are new games from new creators or games coming out of all the the contests we are running. We just finished uh, something called the the core invitation or where we had hundreds of applicants and we selected 50 creators and there is $150,000 worth of prizes. And the games coming out of that contest were absolutely amazing. We're gonna announce the winners next week. But also the fact that the games are constantly updating, like uh, it, it's so hard to keep up even with, with the new stuff of my favorite games, uh, but it's also super cool, right? It's just like, I know that if I have an hour, half an hour, 15 minutes, I can just, enjoy new content all the time and uh it's it's very revolutionary as a as a player like i think it's it's you you we've never seen that in gaming and the analogy probably is better suited to use uh, to use is is with uh, you know i would say twitch youtube right you go whether you like sous vide cooking like i do or regular cooking or vegan cooking uh you go on youtube you, every day there are new videos right uh so it's it's kind of it's a, it's a, i think it's a very new experience for for players so another game i wanted to show off is uh mini golf and uh this is one of my favorite games on the platform despite how bad i am being at it right now <laughs> uh because it's you know this sort of really cool take on golf that's real time uh you're not taking turns it's sort of a race to the finish so what counts is both your um your, your stroke count, uh, but also how fast you finish it. So you can sort of play it two ways. You can sort of play it for lowest uh, lowest score, but you could also play it for lowest time. Uh, oh God, it's so bad. Uh, well, we'll get to a new hole, new hole in a second and I'll, and I'll show you. Uh, but you can see that there's persistent leaderboards for every hole. So you can see how fast the top people have finished uh, this hole, much faster than I am at uh, a minute and 41 seconds now. Um, but yeah, let's go to the next one. Another thing this game shows off is that, you know, we have um, platform level identity and social connections. So all these uh, icons you see next to people names are icons that they've chosen from the icons we have, and you can earn them different ways, player profile pictures. Uh, if you see a Manticore one, that means that you're playing with somebody who works at Manticore, uh, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's sort of like seeing somebody with Riot in their name on League of Legends, you know that they actually have to work there to get that in their name. Yeah. Uh, 
and now I was, uh, playing this one a bit myself. I uh, I like it. I like how there's a uh, there's even a timer on it. Like once the first person sinks the hole, it's like yes. you, all right. Well, the rest of you have twenty seconds. Either catch up or <laughs> we're moving to the next one because um, yeah, that <laughs> can be frustrating when you're playing those games and it's like I've been on this hole for twelve minutes now and it's like yeah, it keeps the game moving. Yeah, this one I mean this one's just so amazing because of the physics and everything like that. Um, let me go ahead and jump to a different game, um, and you know. Uh, I think another really interesting one to show. Uh, you had we this talked cool, about like Dark Souls two D one too that you can show off here. Oh. I want to see that one. Okay, yeah, yeah, you have to tell me the the name. Um, That's pretty wicked. Yeah, Coffee Shop RPG. This one is super neat because it's sort of just a social hangout uh, as a, as a coffee shop, which of course now right now in COVID times is probably safer to hang out here than to go to the real yeah. coffee shop. Um, but the, the creator of this one puts so many cool things in there's a there's a weekly gazette that's actually a newspaper in game that has horoscopes and it has a Sudoku puzzle that you can do. <laughs> so they really tried to go all out and make it uh, mm -hmm. sort of the real the full coffee shop experience. Um, so we'll join in this one real quick. How is uh, everything <laughs> able to load? I mean, that the loading times are so quick, like for mm -hmm. how many assets you must have in the game. How is that so optimized? Yes, absolutely. I mean, the, the, the great one of the great parts about Core is that those assets are already on your local machine. So literally all we're sending across the wire when I load the game is a very small file that defines which assets are where with what material on them. Um, the games on are really a couple hundred K to maybe a couple megs at the most. Um, so that's how we're, how we're able to, ro to load them so fast. Uh, I've got enough money. I'm going to get myself an espresso here. It's a here. same tech that allows you to iterate on your game so fast and publish them so fast and share them with the rest of the world. So it's the same tech that allows you to go from also game to game so quickly, right? And that's why I was, when I was saying, when we talk about the multiverse as um, a connected place, uh, or, or I guess it's not just one place, it's many, many universes, many places, they can be connected any way you want. And it's gonna be up to the creators and the players to decide how all these worlds are connected or not, um, and again, it's a huge departure, right? From having to like install the series of games, then play through them. You don't like them, you move on. Uh, here, it's like instantaneous, right? It's in, you know, I have instant access to these, these, all these games and worlds. You, you can even put games within a game. From yes, the yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> games within a game. Uh, there's actually a. I, I wish that the pin, there's a pinball game that somebody made and they put it on community content and that the great thing about that is that anyone can put it in their game um i think somebody made an arcade where they went through and they took all the mini games um and put them in uh one game uh, as an arcade and i just wanted to show off the uh the pinball game because i think it's actually to your earlier question about physics um the fact that somebody can make an accurate pinball uh, reconstruction here is super cool. So let me load into this game real fast. How big is the initial do the download? Are we like Microsoft Flight Simulator levels? Because that's a lot of assets. Like I said before, like is it a big? Is it one big download? Then after that, you're good, you're good to go. It's a great question. I don't know how how big is Microsoft Flight Simulator nowadays? The new version. Oof, that game is like ninety, a hundred. No, no. We're smaller than that. <laughs> we're about we're about yeah. four gigs. It's about yeah, four gigs download. That's really uh, modest. Yeah, it's, it's a pretty modest size. And uh, so let's go into the arcade here. Let's find uh, what is a good uh, flappy dragon. Okay, pinball, pinball, let's play pinball. Uh, so I'm gonna put my, I'm gonna insert my quarter uh, and then I'm gonna launch the ball with space. Got my flippers. Oh, and I'm no good. I think you can actually even so just so people understand like because i mean i want them to, to really understand how core works everything on the pinball machine that you see the barrels the skull the ship that can all be blown up to different sizes in the game and be used as yeah. like an environment in a third person shooter or, or what yeah. absolutely uh absolutely and you know I, I could actually i think some of those assets on this pinball pirate ship came from core plaza which was um a, a sort of amusement park and if I go into Core Plaza, you'll actually see some of that pirate stuff there. So yeah, you could make, um, you know, we've seen we've seen players make huge houses where you're like running around the size of an, a rat, uh, all the way down to scaling the houses down, and it's uh, you know sort of more SimCity style. Uh, let me go find the Pirate Cove here. And you'll see those exact same assets sort of remixed, and and you know, I think another, that's another really good analogy, sort of remix culture, right? Like and sort of 
taking somebody something's idea and if they allow you to share it to, and share it to to remix it into some other uh, form. I think uh, you know, and we should at some point. I want to also uh, show you show how how to make games too in Core because it's so fast. Like we could literally, you said a couple hours, a couple days before. I could in five minutes make a game and publish it, uh, you know, on stream uh, and put the link in, in chat, and Donovan can play with me. Like it's really that that fast. That's in, it's exactly what Frederick said about the whole idea of like TikTok. Like people have very short attention spans, and you are getting yep. in and out of games so quickly. That's definitely so good. But no, you know, there's no waiting times, and the loading times aren't that long. If you don't like a game in five seconds, you can flip to the next one within 10 seconds, you know? So it's, it's a really mm -hmm. good way, way, TikTok, but video games. Yep, absolutely. It's like an endless arcade. It's like a world of arcade, a universe of arcade, or arcade universe, or however <laughs> lyrically you want to put it together, but you got the idea. This one, Leah, are... go ahead. I used to spend hours in uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon back in the mm. day in like mm -hmm. 90 90 98 it wasn't called that it was called something else but 98 99 I, that game wasted a lot of time yep. of my life absolutely i'm gonna but pick building up some is fun here. you know Let's well go. it's not that wasted because now you are a prominent gaming celebrity <laughs> and journalist so it's not that wasted mom and dad <laughs> yeah yeah, there's just so much. I mean, it's just endless stuff that you can do in Core. Uh, and even in, in Core Plaza, we put portals to different games here. Um, so I think this portal goes to Core Royale, which is, you know, you can imagine a, a Battle Royale game. You uh, want to build a game maybe next, Jordan? Yeah, I can do that. Let's do that real fast. Um, so I'm going to hit Create. And again, like we said, it's sort of one client for both the, the creators and the players, right? Um, and we really are trying to minimize that barrier between being a player and creator the same way that YouTube has minimized the barrier between being a viewer and a video creator. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and create a new game. I'll just call it Shack Demo um, and hit create. And uh, if I hit play, like you can see that same avatar that I had in the game before is here on this blue plane. I could hit publish and we could literally all run around this blue plane together. That's how quick it would be. Uh, that might not be the funnest game though. So I'm gonna add some stuff to it. Uh, I'm gonna take a 10,000 uh, foot view here, get up a little higher. Uh, I'm gonna add a terrain. So we have a really great terrain system in core. I'm just gonna add some background mountains. This will add some random mountains to the background of my game. Uh, and our terrain system <clears throat> might not look it, but it's actually all voxel based uh, and it uses smooth voxels. Um, so what that means is I can, um, you know, just type snow or desert and drag and drop, but I can also carve out um, tunnels and holes. I can have overhangs. Uh, I can make mountains very, very easily and smoothly. Like it's just as, it's as easy as painting really. Um, to do this uh, and if I want to, I can just undo that all control Z. All right, so I've got my mountains now, and there's a couple ways you can make things in Core. You could literally just start dragging and dropping in cubes and putting different materials on them. Uh, or you can go with what we call community content. And community content is, like I said before, anything that a creator has made on Core that they've decided to share uh, with the community. It could be something as simple as a sword uh, that probably comes with the sound effects for swinging the sword and everything. Uh, it could be uh, as complex as a full game framework. So if I type sniper here, I'm gonna find the sniper alley construction kit. And so this is a construction kit for making a sniper game that somebody made and I can import it. And what that will do is just, just because uh, all the assets are already on my machine, it just imported what we call templates. It imported the templates for making this game. And that's what you can see here. Templates are super cool because I can just literally drag and drop them. Uh, and this is the arena template. So I dragged and dropped just the 3D arena into my game. Now this 3D arena itself isn't a single model, right? This is all UGC still. So this is all still pieces that I can grab and move around if I wanted to change it, right? All right, so let's keep going and I'm just gonna grab more and more templates from here, drag and drop them in until we've got a full game. Those templates not only include the art, but also the gameplay. And the music if you want to. And, and obviously what you're looking at now is, let's just be clear, this is very potent, it's very magical. It's a technical feat and it's a complete departure complete departure from the way games are made today, which is still, uh, after using core, you can say it's archaic. The traditional current, uh, traditional uh, game development pipeline is very rigid. 
very regimented, it's very codified, it's really archaic and it involves sometimes, uh, I mean, dozens of people, sometimes a dozen tool, uh, tools, sorry, uh, you need to integrate the content into the pipeline and uh, everything goes through the integration engineers and then later, sometimes a few days later, sometimes more routinely a few weeks later, they come back to you and they give you a ticket saying, hey, yeah, the, we've done the integration, we can play test now. And uh, this is so clunky, this is so archaic, this is so slow, this is so inefficient. So here you have not just the act of creation, but the act of iteration that is so, so, so fast, right? Let alone if all of a sudden you use drag and drop, let alone if all of a sudden you use community content because you don't have to create everything from scratch. Let alone we give you the multiplayer code, let alone we give you the physics, let alone we give you all, all the assets, the music, et cetera, the servers, right? You don't have, all that is transparent. You don't have to think about any of that. And then, then the next best part is you can publish, Jordan is gonna publish the game in a few, few seconds. You can publish that game to the world, real-time multiplayer game in just a few seconds. And then a few seconds later, people can play your game. So this is like this loop of creation, iteration, publishing, and is, is, is I don't know, um, a, a, a million times, 1,000 times faster than the way games are made. So you can imagine for creators, it's amazing. And for players, what it means is that a wider variety of games, more games, faster iteration, easy way to give feedback to the creators and the creators can implement this feedback very, very quickly. So we're gonna see like just a massive acceleration in terms of creativity, in terms of the marketplace of ideas, where there is this exchange between, among creators, between creators and players. And then of course the players are gonna be like, why can't I be a creator? So I think Jordan just published the game. I did, I published the game and I dropped the link um, in the, the Zoom chat that we're on here. Uh, but literally you can click that link uh, and Donovan, I know you've got Core installed. You can click that link and it will drop you into the same instance of that game that I just published right here. Um, and, you know, if we wanted to go and change the gravity or if we wanted to add jetpacks or anything else to this game, it would be just as fast as you saw there. I would just go look for literally the word jetpack on community content. And there I see Donovan is in this game uh, and a bunch of other people. So literally that's how fast it was, right? Like that was five minutes, I think. <laughs> yeah. um Frederick, how like I've we, I've seen my share of st studios done behind the scenes stuff and like um and like even even with like dual at the time like dual eighty twenty TIs you know SLI riggers and animators and environmental artists like there's chug you know it's slow it's not smooth it's very rigid um your thing is like has no hang whatsoever how are you able to accomplish that is there some back end processing happening I mean everything is just so lag free and smooth. Well, you're, you're asking the, 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 the one, the least technical person in the whole company and also <laughs> the luckiest, most privileged person in the company because we, we just have an amazing team, right? I think it's a mix of lots of things. It's a mix of having a really amazing team. We recruited the very best people we've ever worked with, the very best people we know, uh, whether it's marketing, QA, customer service, and of course, engineering on art, right? Um, you have a super experienced team. The other thing is we also build everything from the ground up, starting with first principles. We said, what do we want core to achieve? And I will tell you as, as a CEO in the early days, sometimes it was interesting because I was never worried, but Jordan or CTO would say, Frederick, we're going to do all that. First principles, like it needs to be uh, the, the, the best platform for creativity, creating games, it has to have publishing, it has to have monetization. And you're not gonna see anything on the screen for three months because we're gonna do some hardcore architecturing. And I was fine with it. The first games in core three or four years ago were basically, uh, they were literally called a world full of crates because it was just crates. But right away, we saw the potential of building everything from the ground up, following all these first principles we, we already touched on. Uh, you know, ease of use, anybody can use uh, core, anybody can create no code, low code, high code, uh, you know. So, uh, and of course, all the way back to the multiplayer code, we know, like I've helped, like you have seen so many studios, I've seen dozens and dozens of studios, and they inevitably hit the same buyers. And one of these buyers is, if you want to make multiplayer code, the multiplayer uh, code stack. And you can use plugins in some cases, but we all know it's temporary. 
and you will have at some point to do your own custom multiplayer stack. Well, that is actually really hard. As you know, multiplayer, uh, real-time multiplayer uh, game netcode is one of the hardest aspects of gaming and it usually has to be customized so from the get-go we invested in that so that it's seamless it can work for real-time multiplayer games real-time pvp games first person shooters first person shooters and by extension mmos and all the other genres also we've invested in the back end uh so that it's it's transparent to the creators they don't have to know anything about the the client server architecture how to manage the servers all that is transparent for them they have access to really high-end servers managed by us and it's all it's all dynamic. It's all automatic and dynamic. That's uh, that's <laughs> rad. Uh, <laughs> it really is rad. Um, can you guys talk about you, talk, you mentioned plugins? Are you able to upload like voice clips of yourself or sound files? I mean, obviously that gets a little like complicated with copyrighted material. Like, do you allow users to do that? Yeah, that's a great question. Right now, um, we do not allow you to upload. Uh, audio or different audio, but we have so much audio built in and so much music built in uh, that's also very modifiable um, that you know we haven't run into the, the need for it yet. And in fact, people have actually made their own rhythm games. We have you know a bunch of piano samples and somebody figured out how to play MIDI files in, inside of Core using those piano samples. So people have made their own rhythm games. Uh, I, went, I deviated a little bit from the normal demo here uh, making Sniper Alley. I, I wanted to now make Spider Alley uh, with this giant horrific <laughs> spider we have here. But you also saw that I was able to add just like a, a neat little, you know, homage to a uh, portal gun and and portal around that that uh, that level just that fast. Like, right, like I could add jetpacks to this that fast. Uh, it's really unprecedented. It's, uh, and yeah, that's rad. Because like that, they, just that is a whole different mechanic than any other game if you're making like, you, you can't just mm -hmm. add that to something like Call of Duty. You have to recode everything. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's insane. Exactly, exactly. The sandbox get is it. really impressive. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, yeah, so that's building the, that's building the, the, that's how fast it is to make games in core. Um, I started from a, a blank uh, slate, but you can actually also start, we have a bunch of existing frameworks that you can, if you're a creator, you, you can start from. Um, so these frameworks, you know, if you want to just do a third person King of the Hill, this could, clicking this button gets you a complete third person King of the Hill game that you can then modify the damage, the, you know, the, how long you have to be on the Hill to win and to, or all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling that Greg is not, Greg on the Nirvana are going to send their resumes at the end of this call. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I'm game dev now. I'm no longer yeah. a journalist. I've ascended. Yes. Yeah. Uh, you, you said it yourself. I don't know. It's, it's a great profession too. You folks are very helpful. You're also opening gaming to all, all sorts of new people. And I think one of the messages, obviously, to your audience and to your friends uh, is, is, you know, to come, maybe become a creator, even though they think they are not creators or cannot create games. That's, that's no longer the case with Core. And also come on play, right? And experience a different experience, different. You, you'll find something, as Patrick was saying, like, I give you less than five minutes to find something that catch your attention uh, and your fancy in core. And this is all, and just to, to reiterate again, this is all free. There, there's no like gate of like, oh, you have nope. to buy this specific nope. model or, or backpack. Nope. Everything is just accessible nope. right at the get-go. Free to play, free to create. Um, and you can earn cosmetics with various programs if that's what you're interested in. Uh, and uh, yeah, no, free to play, free to create, open to all, all over the world. Is it as simple as, uh, Jordan, is this simple as like, when you want to create a genre, say you want to do turn-based RPG, is it like just selecting turn-based RPG and there's a template or like, how does that work when you're trying to make a genre? We've seen a lot of shooters, third person, uh, sure. free roam games, but when you want to get more in depth, like you right now you're playing like a turn-based tile game. Like how do you mm -hmm. set the genre of the game you're making? Yep, uh, it's a great question. Uh, you can the first step I would do is look for it on community content to see if somebody's already put one up there. Uh, we also have a flag um, where anyone who's published a game can open that game for edit, and you can actually open that game in the editor and start from there. So a lot of people have made sort of like turn-based frameworks, uh, board game frameworks that you could use, um, and things like that. Uh, but if you if you are more technical and you want to code it yourself, you know we support Lua as a programming language. Uh, which is a full feature programming language so you can actually get there and code in lua uh everything you want to the camera motion the how those things you know merge all that's all that stuff uh so it's, we really um built core around a philosophy of opt-in complexity if you just want to make the simplest thing possible it's drag and drop 
uh, and you can mix and match those drag and drops. But if you want to go, you know, go to your level of comfort of of technicality, you can you can really make anything. I almost feel like this is the next step in evolution of game design because back in the day, people had to have their own proprietary engines, and then as that started to go away people were like why make our own engine we can just use unreal unity and it's like well why make why use unreal unity we can just use core <laughs> yep he, yeah. frederick you're right greg is greg is parroting this stuff i've been saying now in demos for a, a while and i have used all those engines in the past and i can imagine a future in five years from now where it, it might seem archaic to actually use an engine where i had to import a model from a separate program and import sound from a separate program like it would seem as archaic as writing a game in assembly language does today like right like that why would you ever put yourself through that but it's almost like um with, with all due respect to classically trained uh musicians but <clears throat> you know uh it, it, you know the the, the advent of synthesizers and um, you know uh, mixing software in the seventies, eighties, and later on now, right? Like I have I have several friends who are, including my second brother, who are musicians and they are not classically trained at all, and yet in some cases uh, they are very famous. Uh, they are the lead, leaders of bands that you know and who make all sorts of music thanks to computers. I think we're going to see the same thing here, the same. And likewise on Twitch, on YouTube, right? You have people who 10 years ago were still kids, right? <laughs> if you go back 10, 15 years ago, they were five, six year old, eight year old. And now they are like, you know, at the at the helm of um, what I would call, you know, multimedia entertainment umpires, right? You look at Preston, you look at Mr. Beast, you look at all these folks, uh, they, they have vast following, they create, uh, you know, amazing entertaining content in most cases in some cases uh and they they are extremely wealthy and and so we're going to see the same thing happening in core uh actually we are likely to see i think lots of these um influencers come to core very naturally because they are on twitch they're on twitter they are on instagram they're on youtube uh, on patreon and etc and, and then they, they they have to be on core to offer uh, another uh, source of entertainment to their audience and also to monetize, right? So different, different form of entertainment, different form of engagement. It's extending the, the footprint of their, their brand. Um, and so it's going to be like almost a faux pas now not to be in core uh, for them. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing when you want, if you want to monetize your game, there's some type of approval process. Because what's to stop me from, I'm, mean, what's to stop yes. someone from making a game called like a Ghostbusters, and like you don't own Ghostbusters, so you can't monetize yeah. that game, right? You're absolutely right. Yes, we, um, you know, we, we have, we have done uh, everything uh, the proper way, uh, which is, you know, when you deal with uh, people's uh, living economics, when you live, when you deal with. Uh, money and then revenue and ref share, etc. You have to be really um, all is it button. I always confuse button button up or button down. Anyways, everything has to be squared away, and uh, I'm sure we'll be the only one to give kudos and a shout out to our general counsel. We've hired uh, someone who has at Linden Lab, Sony, as well, uh, Tryon Worlds, who's worked on MMOs, who's worked on who worked on um, who has worked on a. Uh, uh, a creator's economy before uh, because we want to do it the right way. So as a creator, you need to qualify. There is a process uh, and uh, which is, you know, uh, also very, you know, uh, legally serious so that we can do a proper ref share with you and you can be paid. Uh, but, you know, once you have a popular game and it's a fairly, fairly, in, uh, in, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's a very convenient, very easy process. You have to qualify, then you can you can earn revenues on the platform. It's, it's kind of like any other platform in some ways, like whether it's Twitch, YouTube, um, Roblox, right? You, you, you except, except here, you know, the economics are very different and we do a 50-50 ref share, right? Which is really unheard of, quite frankly, when it comes to UGC. That's great. It's really impressive just overall the variety and I, I i haven't seen a game yet that hasn't had like nobody in it there's always somebody in the game rather that jordan's been uh uh joining it's really that's really cool so you guys definitely have a big community and it's about to get much bigger of course with our launch on the eg on the epic game store i think uh on on the 15th of april Ooh, 
I'm just bouncing around through. Uh, Has there been any here. any? Oh, sorry, Donovan, go ahead. Oh, no, that's I was just I'm just bouncing around through games here, trying out different genres and stuff. Has there been any request for like pixel art in your game, like 2D, like 2D side scrolling stuff? Do you guys have that in your game? Is it something you plan on adding in the future? Has someone fed you all these questions? Uh, because like this is like you, you have no idea. Uh, you have no idea what you just hit on. So our art director mm -hmm. and chief visual officer, officer Dan Fessler, is a world-renowned pixel art uh, expert, luminary, etc. Like actually, the the way we met Dan was twelve years ago. We we're making a pixel art kind of trend tycoon type game on Facebook, and it was this uh, young guy, uh, and he sent us some test work in pixel art and we're like oh wow uh so anyways and now he's art director and she visual officer but uh i'm sure jordan can find some that yeah what's uh what's great about am i muted no what's great about this uh pixel art of course is that it's all three it's actually all in 3d like right like these are all actually 3d models uh, of, mm -hmm. of you know planes or cubes that have been changed into pixels uh and loaded from basically i think what the creator did here was they basically defined um, in, J in, in JSON the, the pixels and then put them in. Uh, and I, Greg, earlier you mentioned a side-scroller game that was sort of Dark Souls looking-ish. I think that you might've been referring to a game that we, that we uh, saw recently um, come up called Sir Pepe and the Goblins. This is actually a really interesting one because this is an indie studio from Chile. And they, they put this game together for the Invitational. So they put it together in less than a month. And this is a studio that I don't think would have made a multiplayer game previously. Um, but here uh, in Core, they're able to make it natively multiplayer. So this is a two-player co-op game. Uh, it's a side-scroller. Uh, and it's got some you know great classic homage. Uh, and you'll see it in a second here. Um, and what's great about it being co-op is that you can revive your teammates. So you know, one, of, one of you can tank and the other can uh, revive. Uh, so I love that they and did this little intro scene. The thing to notice is Pepe here is not the um, Nefarious version of Pepe. It's a, it's Pepe means kind of like average Joe in uh, Spanish in uh, South America. The first time we've seen cutscenes in in your demo too, which is that we're actually kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of games are integrating these type of things now. Um, one of my I don't know if it's a prediction or hope or what. I I want uh, Machinima Movie Makers to come to Core and I, I want people who want to make uh, music videos to come to Core and use Core because Core can actually be used for all that very easily. Uh, not everything has to be a game. You know, some things are experiences, uh, worlds, right? This is definitely music. not Ghost and Goblins. It's definitely not. It's definitely no not. Way. Uh, I'm going to turn up the It's an homage. Here's my teammate. Here we go. Twixler. What was the that's a, other game? That's awesome, guys. I, I do have to wrap because we do have a stream at 1.30. Um, but thank you so much. Where can people go to find more information about Core and uh, and download it and everything? Right now, they can go to corgames.com. Um, and on April 15th, you get it from the Epic Game Store.